Welcome to our podcast, Stepping into Shakespeare, a podcast journey with the Bard. In this podcast, we are talking about the actor's approach to Hamlet, Shakespeare's Hamlet. I am Therese Surya, a Swiss actress based in the UK. And I'm Sarah Lynn Dawson, a British actress based in LA. The purpose of this podcast is to document our rehearsal process with reading Hamlet. Today, we are talking about our personal approach to Shakespeare and how we as actors were experiencing the reading of Hamlet. I was reading Ophelia. And I was reading Gertrude and Laertes and a few other characters that got thrown in at the last minute. (laughs) And Sarah, how did you get into Shakespeare? So I always just loved Shakespeare. In England, we have it as part of our school. We have to do certain plays and I had to do actually the Scottish play. (laughs) Um, So I know a lot of that play and I just always loved Shakespeare. I just always found it was so um, beautiful. The words were beautiful and the writing was really amazing. Mm -hmm. And then in New York, when I lived there, I worked on actually Hamlet and Ophelia. Um, And then through the years, I just always loved everything about Shakespeare and I was in a Shakespeare group Mm -hmm. with a couple of the other actors Bill and Emmanuel and we read quite a lot of plays and then during the pandemic we Mm -hmm. obviously started reading plays and we've done I think like 11 now so 11 wow been fantastic yes and what about you what's your experience well I'm actually rather new to Shakespeare compared to you but I came to it I think thanks to you when you asked me to join reading Caesar That was in lockdown, wasn't it? And for me, when I came to England, I was always, um, I knew Shakespeare is here, but I was so timid and shy about it. I always thought I need to be perfect and understand English really on on all levels that I have access to it. And then one friend, she was just, Therese, relax, it's just words. So she kind of helped me to get into it and to build the courage and then... Um, I slowly, slowly approach it and I find it fascinating, really. And I love Caesar, but I also love like Hamlet. I think Hamlet is one of my favorites. Yeah, and I think it's quite an amazing play like to work on because, yeah. it's, I mean, it's so long and it has yeah. such ups and downs and... And no, complicated it's... stories, intervening and sad stories. I think it's it's really, really great. And you shouldn't worry about the language because it's, I mean, for me, it's an older English anyway. Yeah. You know, Shakespeare's English exactly. is not my English. So we're, I'm yeah. kind of translating. So for everybody, yeah. it's stepping back and into time, it isn't it? And how does it feel for you reading this old language? It feels a little strange because for them, it was very normal and they say everything mm-hmm. in their everyday mm-hmm. life. And for me, I don't say a Jew or any yeah. of this kind yeah. of language. But the trick is obviously to make it sound like you say it all exactly. the time. And the more you do it, the more you start to yeah. think, oh, yeah, this is like... Yeah. Just saying hi, bye. <laughs> exactly. Like, for example, they say, hath, I hath been there, or like this, this mm-hmm. PH, I think, comes up all the time. That's so true. And the way yeah. he writes, it's the same pattern and the same, yeah. 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 It's very fascinating. And how yeah. was your experience of Ophelia? Because she's a, a very dramatic character. Absolutely. I mean, I love to play her. Um, and when I was rehearsing it, I could feel like, okay, she, how she became really from a sad girl, she became a crazy girl, and how she, she became mad out of sadness. Mm-hmm. I actually just understood her recently that she lost her dad. And mm-hmm. then in her singing, the fascinating thing is when they sing in that play, um, they always, it's almost like then they say the truth, but she's already so mad that she can't say what really happened. And in one of her songs, she kind of explained that she went to Hamlet in her, his room and kind of slept with him, but she wanted him to marry him. Mm-hmm. And then he said, well, I would have married you if you wouldn't have come to my room. Yeah. And that's the biggest betrayal ever. <laughs> I felt so sorry for that girl. And yeah. Yeah, it, it 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 was it's a heartbreaking character, and she is literally she tried to to do the best, and she gets betrayal and and loss, and apparently it's very sad. It's very sad. It's very sad. It's just so heartbreaking to watch 
her uh, transition from being this young yeah. happy girl in love yeah. and then just this downfall it's this very downfall it's... and this complete um in a way you could say victim but she is completely mm-hmm. she gave everything into into this hope that she will have hamlet and she, that he will love her and she had no she didn't have command on her own life she depended on that as well very very and I think obviously women at the time were in this position yeah. where they were um kind of commodities like who they yeah. marry and yeah. you know so she, yeah. she was quite dependent on her father and and she her lost brother. her honor because of that so and then she well she drowned herself at the end yes which we just hear about um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. exactly yeah we, which but is, for me yeah, it was a, a great experience I really tried to get this sadness madness into that song and mm-hmm. often people who are it's an overwhelming emotion for her so I often think you know this quick change between angry loud and shy and all this different way how she tried to express herself but actually probably madness is then um almost uh, a protection of her that she doesn't have to feel these horrible feelings Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Her like brain is just like it's like stopping her. It's it's too mm. horrible. Yeah. So wow, that was kind wow. of uh, yeah. But... Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it was traumatic. It was traumatic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and how was it for you to play uh, um, Gertrude? Well, it was it was really interesting because I you know I played Ophelia and then I was like okay Gertrude. I wasn't really sure what her character was because I've not mm-hmm. worked on it before. Mm-hmm. But actually, when I started working on it, there's quite a lot to Gertrude as well because she has a lot of elements happening with mm-hmm. her son and then, you know, everything, the plot line. And so it was a very interesting journey for me to work on her. And she was definitely, you know, she's not a good character. She mm-hmm. has like, she says it herself, she has black spots in her mm-hmm. soul. So she mm-hmm. does walk the line of like, you know, which way is she going to go? And so mm-hmm. it was interesting for me to look at that and obviously to work with Frank you know yeah. being my son which is quite it's, yeah was, you know but you just you work on a different relationship for that and then obviously I got to play Laertes which is really exactly which is really fun I yeah. mean I really have fun playing some of the male characters, the male characters because yeah. there's no expectation or any you can just kind of do what you want yeah so exactly that was really fun as well yeah. I was always wondering with Gertrude did she know what was going it's, on it's really tricky really know. no you don't know I mean it's not in the play at all and I think it's up to interpretation really yeah. um yeah. so I suppose as an actor you have to make a choice like what yeah. does she know um but that yeah. midpoint I mean the scene in the play act three is it where Hamlet is telling her like that's the point where she kind of like comes to the realization of what's yeah, going on what's going and on. essentially chooses Hamlet's side um yeah but and until that point it's kind of a yeah, you're not sure really. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it's very good. Yeah. And were you preparing yourself for, because she's an older character and you were like older than Frank, did you prepare yeah. especially or what, how, how was that? Um, well, because we're doing audio, it doesn't really matter so much because you yeah, can kind true. of like just yeah. go on the voice. But yeah, I mean, it would be hard to imagine having like a 33 year old son but at the same time yeah. you know you just have relationships in your life that you can kind of pull from and like yeah, exactly. put into that and I think with the audio you don't really it doesn't really matter so much yeah. you just sort of yeah. hear the words and go with yeah. that but yeah it's just the fun of acting isn't it, it just is. to, to like take and on I, something exactly and I was every time we came together as a group I was so um, touched by acting really happens in a group it's a group phenomenon like definitely you can rehearse at home and you can try to get in the character but what really happens once you're in a reading this is just it, it, I kind of like that so much it it's makes something so great with you. yeah you can really step into a story yeah and the more you see somebody like really going on a journey yeah. with their character it really exactly. helps you like bring something to the table I'm like okay yes. He just gave me that, so I'm gonna, you know, you can't just go back with like. Yeah, oh. and I find it fascinating that it even works here online on on Zoom. Mm. We can experience that. That is pretty amazing when you think because about it. Because we're not even in the same room. Because usually you're in a room and then you have these um, connections with the other people. Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating, and I mean, right now you're in France, so yes. it's like so incredible. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're having this conversation. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's something about the words and the like it, it translates really well on Zoom, doesn't it? Yes. It's really pretty incredible. Absolutely. And yeah. I, that's what I love about Shakespeare as well. Like the plot will happen as long as you can just say the words. It doesn't really matter yeah. who's playing the yeah. character, the, it, yeah. the theme comes across. Absolutely. And when we were reading yesterday, did you have like a moment which were you were really touched or where you thought that's a special moment? Oh, I really liked when you were doing Ophelia. I was like crying when you were doing oh, no. that. <laughs> like, so I was like, oh, this, this is really heartbreaking. Um, you know, oh, seeing so somebody, because Gertrude obviously cares about Ophelia uh-huh. and she's obviously, you know, uh-huh. one of these moms where my son's going to marry this girl. Exactly, and, like, she wanted her to be, yeah. Yeah, so seeing that was really heartbreaking. And I think, you know, a lot of characters, you experience something through the other characters. So like, yeah. you know, Gertrude's maybe yeah. cut off from her emotions a little bit, yeah. with, but then she's like experiencing through you yeah. this like awful yeah. sadness and stuff. Yeah. Um, I yeah. mean, we don't see Gertrude that distressed, you know. So yeah, what about you? Well, for me, uh, especially all the drama when everyone got, gets killed and uh, <laughs> <laughs> drinks uh, uh, the, uh, the poison, but as well, I think I understood the subtle nuances of jokes which the grave digger do. I mean, they kind of, mm. they tell Hamlet about himself. And I found that fascinating. Um, yes, that is so fascinating. Interesting how, and then I I think Hamlet plays sometimes mad or he he uses his man as execution say oh it wasn't me it was my man is so and you never really it's it's a very subtle line Mm -hmm. where where hamlet plays there and i was like okay it this i understand why this play is so famous and so much talked about (laughs) yeah (laughs) because it has nuances and i don't know if i get them all to be honest I'm sure you do on an emotional yeah, level. It's exactly. just that yeah. it's Shakespeare's throwing it at you, you know. Yeah, He's like, okay, exactly. there's this and yeah. then there's this yeah. and then there's this. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> there's just so much going on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. The gravedigger scene is like, you would have to have that humor. You cannot do that job and be distressed, you know? Exactly. You have to have this like gallows humor <laughs> to be able to get through your job. And especially in a play where everybody gets killed at the end. I found that so um, almost symbolic, having a grave digger telling well, Hamlet who he yeah. is. And, Actually, um, right. Yeah, I never really thought about that. But yeah, he kind of says that. I think that. Hamlet has one line where he says, well, if I don't die now, he, he doesn't care anymore, almost. Like, I, when they mm. ask him for, for the duel, like for the, the fighting with Laertes, he's like, I don't know, when later. Yeah, and that's quite a definite character choice, isn't it? Because, like, he's yeah. going to be king. I mean, Claudius says, like, you know, we're going to give the throne to you, Hamlet. Yeah. Like, why yeah. are you acting like this? Yeah. Um, so Hamlet has definitely thrown away his future. But he's not thinking about that, is he? Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. And he has nothing to lose. And he knows that he want, that they want him to be killed and... Yeah. Yeah, I really like the idea of the fight scene. When I was in New York, we I went to, like... My teacher, who's amazing, told me, like, yeah. oh, you have to do fencing. Okay. So we were, <laughs> me and my friend, we went to this I fencing would love class. To do that. She was horrified. She was like, but I loved it. I was like, yes, this is so yes. cool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it's just like on stage, I imagine this is a quite a tricky scene to choreograph because uh-huh. you're, I mean, I think there's been plays where people have actually been stabbed. I don't know if it's this one, but I know, you know, when really? they do these fight scenes on stage, it's oh, a little bit. Um, yeah. yeah. And is there like a, a favorite line or something? Oh, what, do you, I, what do you kind of love out of the play? So the one I always remember is, to thine own self be true. That's when um, Polonius is giving advice to Laertes when he's going away. And yes. he's like, this is above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the day the night thou canst not then be false to any man. So, so if you're too honest with yourself, you're honest with the other people. Yeah. That's literally what he say, yeah. Polonius is kind of full of a lot of stuff, so mm-hmm. it's... That has always been in my brain. I'd always heard mm-hmm. that. And then mm-hmm. it, was, it wasn't until we did the play. I was like, oh, it's Polonius who's saying that. Yeah. Like, I didn't know okay, who was going to so say it. so you knew it. the line before. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, obviously, to be or not to be and some of the other yeah. amazing. Yeah. What about you? Well, what for me, it was really about? funny. The first landlady I stayed in England, she was very helpful to me. And I was came new to England. I was like, oh, culture and everything. And then she said something. Every time I 
told something isn't in order, she said, oh, everything is rotten in the state of Denmark. And I looked wow. at her like, what the state of Denmark? I had no idea. And then I caught it. It is out of Hamlet. And actually, I had, wow. to, I had to read that line and was so happy. So it was you kind of... Did. Yeah, yeah, everything is rotten in the state of Denmark. I remember That's at the beginning because you played. Um, which character were you playing at the beginning? Was it? Um, uh, for, no, I need Fortinbras. No, Marcellus. Uh, Marcellus, exactly. That's yeah. his line. Yeah. That's and a great it, opening. It's kind of a saying for. Oh, everything is wrong. Actually, going on. Yeah, so everything is rotten. Wow, amazing that somebody said that to you. And before I on. knew where it came. Yeah. Yeah, and I yeah. think it, the English language is full of these little hints to these lines mm -hmm. coming from Shakespeare plays, yeah. Most definitely, because when we've been reading the other plays, and Julius Caesar was quite a lot yeah. as well, you hear somebody read it and you, that's where that's come from. And yes. It's like peppered, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. What amazing writer. I mean, how he just changed, like, the trajectory of yeah. theatre. And for actors, yeah. it's so amazing to work on these plays because you just get yeah. to just have fun. So in terms of the language, like, I think what's really amazing for me is how you just jump in and you just do it and I think that's the idea behind Shakespeare everybody should be able to do yeah. Shakespeare absolutely I mean it did take me a little bit of courage um and I had these barriers these language barriers um but the more that I do it the more I get confident and the more I, it's absolutely as you said um it should be open to everyone and even I think even if you don't understand the word literally you don't need to make a translation, but you can get a feeling of it. 100%. And you can even understand the, the beauty of it. You kind of go, oh, wow. But don't ask me to make a, a literal translation. But I think that's the nice way to go into a foreign language as well. If you just get yes. the mood and the feeling of it. Um, yeah. And you, it's kind of you have to trust yourself or you have to trust your own understanding that you can follow it and, and be touched by it. Even if you don't know literally every single word, they, they, yeah. it still works. And that's, I kind of find that um, very fascinating. It's very fascinating. And the emotion carries you. you, yeah. know? you exactly. When you're playing the character and you're feeling the emotions, yeah. you say the word and the emotion, it combines. And yes. it kind of like the action yeah. carries it, doesn't uh, it? So. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's what's so incredible about Shakespeare. And you're right, yeah. you don't really, if you get caught on the words, then it's a trap because you're just going to be Exactly. Like, oh. And then you lose, <laughs> yeah, you, you lose the flow of, of, mm. of, of your characters. And what's actually really funny about Hamlet as well is the humour just pops up <laughs> at bizarre moments. <laughs> in, and it's quite like, I mean, some of it's like a lot of like sexual innuendo and um, like at the play scene where Hamlet's like, lady, can I lie in your lap? And you can just yes. imagine people were laughing like crazy yes. in some of these yeah. scenes. Yeah. Because especially at the time when this stuff was kind of more. Uh... So it's funny sometimes because I sometimes think of Spears as being this like highbrow and it's like very, uh, you know, flowing words and stuff. But he has a lot of just regular life in there that's just yeah. very funny. And yeah. Sometimes when one of the actors is reading something and I just laugh because I'm like, oh, my God, that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, true. <laughs> no, cool. it's great we did that. It's really, really cool. Definitely. Definitely. Sarah, thank you so much for this nice conversation. I love talking to you. Thank you so much. This is so fun. It's so nice to just uh, talk about like what we experienced and to share it with exactly. people. And I loved your idea about the podcast making Shakespeare accessible to people because I think that's really important. And it's just really, it is available for everybody. Exactly. So in our next episode, we're going to be talking to Frank Greaves, who played Hamlet in our reading. And we're going to be talking about his experience of Hamlet.